Garrett, can you just introduce yourself to the people at home? Hi, I'm Garrett Bittner. I'm a producer on Civilization 5 at 2K. Okay, great. Um, first things first, the screenshots show a hex grid and um, it used to be a square. What was the um, motivation behind changing the grid system for the movement in the game? Well, there were a lot of interesting things that happened with the square system um, and, and it wasn't always really clear uh, the movement in the world and, and what we really try to do with changing from that square system to, to a hex based system is make all that movement so much more easy to understand and so much clearer. For example, um, you know, on a, on a hex system you don't have movements that are cheaper than other movements. On the square system, if you moved along the diagonal, it was less expensive than if you moved in any of the other cardinal directions. So um, it, it just makes um, the world around you a lot more clear. Um, it also really helps us to make this this organic and beautiful terrain that we have in Civilization V. One thing that I've um, that I've heard about the game is you've removed the religions entirely from the from the diplomatic process. What was the motivation behind that? Well, um, in Civilization IV, um, religion really served as a diplomatic catalyst. Um, and the, the, the gameplay dynamic for religion was that, uh, you know, if you had a different religion than uh, another civilization, it may uh, cause a point of friction or some, you know, different sort of diplomatic action. You know, likewise, if you had the same religion, you get a diplomatic boost. Uh, and what we've done with Civilization V is sort of, uh, we have different ways of, of uh, triggering that sort of diplomatic action. Um, we have city-states and we have all these you know other cool things that the AI is much more world aware so like they can see what you're doing and talk to you about it and maybe try to make decisions or or uh, you know agreements with you based upon what you're actually doing in the game and not necessarily what religion you may be but that you know that being said we know that there are a lot of big proponents to religion a lot of people really enjoyed religion so for I'm one of them I really enjoyed it but I think we've um, provided uh, you know something unique and something interesting in place of what religion used to be. We do have aspects of religion that are still in the game. There's, uh, we've removed a lot of the things, uh, religious stuff into the, in the policy tree, so you can make religious choices about how your uh, your go your uh, civilization governs itself. Is you know you have this piety tree, which provides you a lot of happiness bonuses if you want to invest in that. A lot of really cool stuff like that. Now I hear there's been a few changes to the way that the the strategy and the combat has taken out in the game, starting with ranged units who actually can shoot from range. Definitely. Um, range units make a reappearance in Civilization. We used to have them in Civ 3 and now they're in Civ 5 again. And um, one interesting thing about ranged units is um, because we've removed stacks from the game and now we can only put one unit in each tile, what we have is this really interesting dynamic where range units can sit behind your front lines where they're protected and sort of fire over it and then help out your melee units and sort of weaken up the enemy or maybe attack from uh, from a distance without risking uh, you know further uh, injury to, to, to your units. Okay. Now that you've removed the stacks, that sort of implies that there's going to be smaller army sizes. Um, so can you tell me more about that, and in particular the way the resources are going to be handled? Um, so, uh, yes, the the uh, number of units you have in any particular game of Civ is going to be much smaller than it would be in previous Civilization titles. Um, and I think I think that's a very good thing. It keeps the pace of the of the game consistent from, from the beginning of the game all the way to the end. It's no, it's no longer a nightmare to manage your army and all the resources you have in the end of the game. And it, now it's much more fluid and much more uh, manageable. Um, and uh, we've also folded resources into this to try to, you know, sort of um, naturally uh, uh, grow the way you deal with units. So, for example, there are special units in the game, and the powerful units take up resources, a certain amount of, of resources. Say, um, you know, uh, uh, a boat will take up a, a unit of iron resources. But you only have a, a, a certain finite number of resources, so you can only build a certain number of, of units before you've run out of that, that, that resource. Moving on from that, how do the world leaders influence the game? Oh, the world leaders, we, we put a lot of, uh, of effort into refining the artificial intelligence for Civilization V. Um, artificial intelligence have, has always been a big focus for Civilization because you need to play against intelligent opponents and it makes it interesting when you're playing against intelligent opponents. But we, what we really focused on for Civilization V is making those opponents feel lifelike and feel realistic. And so what they do now is they we want them to feel like, they're, like you're playing against a friend, that you know they have particular tactics that they like, they have a particular way they want to win the game. And so each of the, the leaders in, 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 this, in the game all have a particular flavor. Um, 
you know, Montezuma is going to be very, very aggressive. Uh, Napoleon's going to try to expand and, and have a big army. Um, Elizabeth is going to uh, favor, uh, you know, sort of maritime approach. She's going to have a big navy. That sort of stuff. And, and they all have really, really unique and really noticeable flavors. Um, but that being said, they're also intelligent and they can adapt. So if you are defeating them in a certain area, they may adjust their focus and, and go after uh, something else that they may have a chance to win. They're all trying to win the game, and they're all, you know, sort of, uh, you know, build up this this complex and and you know interesting environment of, of relations between each of the um, each of the civilizations. And we hope it really feels like you're playing against human opponents. Sounds great. The um, the UI I've seen is quite cut down. It's quite stripped down. Is all that complexity still able to be handled quite you know easily by that UI? Yes. Definitely, definitely. Um, we've always known, and, and civilization from the beginning has always been about, uh, you know, renewing the great civilization franchise on the PC. Like all these great hardcore fans that we have, we want to give them this, uh, you know, this great game and this great experience, and provide them the depth that has always been in the civilization, um, the civilization series. Um, but at the same time, we learned a lot when we did Civ, Civ Revolution. Um, we learned a lot about what information the player needs right at their fingertips. And what information may not, uh, you know, may not be as uh, as necessary right on the front, right in the UI. And so what we learned is um, to streamline the interface and to, to uh, you know, make it a lot more elegant, a lot more simple. And so we've taken those lessons and we've applied them to Civ Five. All that information that you love about civilization is there. It just, uh, it's just handled in a much simpler fashion. Um, we've pushed the UI to the screen, to the edges of the screen. It's a little bit more minimal. Um, the information you need is there, but if you hover over something, it'll give you more detailed information. You can still have the options to, to uh, choose which, uh, the, what focus each individual city has. You can change uh, the workers if you want to. You have all those abilities that you love in civilization, but it's presented in a much cleaner fashion. How's multi? Player going to be fed into Civ 5? Uh, multiplayer is a big focus for Civ 5, as has been in, in previous Civilization tiles, and you can expect to see all the different options that uh, have been in uh, previous Civilization tiles in Civ 5. Um, we're going with full Steamworks support, um, so that gives us a lot of really cool things to help establish and build a multiplayer community. It gives us uh, an integrated browser so you can, um, you know, you know, be on Civ Fanatics and be interacting with the community. It gives us, uh, you know, matchmaking. It gives us voice support. It gives us friends and all these really cool community layers. And we're adding that to the Civilization franchise. Yeah. Now I hear you at the browser inside the game, sort of a nod towards the um, the online community who really helped out with the modding. Definitely, definitely. And, and modding is very important to us, as is our community. And, and what's great about Civilization, it has such a strong community. And modding has always been important to us. And, what, and one of the things that we noticed when starting Civilization V is we had this great modding community, but it was really hard to get to the mods. You often had to go to an external site. You had to visit a forum, download their, their mod. You had to unpack it and install it in a specific folder. And then you had to launch the game, and then maybe launch the game again to get to the mod. All those steps. And it's still a mod like Fall From Head has been downloaded half a million times. So what we're doing now is we're de we're destroying all those barriers. What you do now when you play a mod in Civilization 5, you go to a button in the main menu, it'll take you to an to in, in-game browser where you can browse all the mods. You can click on a mod, it will download it, install it while you're playing the game, and you can play the game, you can play the mod without ever, ever leaving the game experience. Wow, that sounds incredible. Um, just finally, what was your what's your sort of pick, your, your finest feature in Civ 5? Uh, for me personally, I love the one unit per tile, and I love the new combat. It's so much deeper. It's so much more interesting, and um, and it's interesting throughout the game. Um, it never becomes uh, uh, difficult or or slow to manage your manage your civilization. It's, it, it, and the gameplay is consistent and always very very interesting. Now you don't have to worry about getting um, completely destroyed when going through a choke point. Yes. Yes. <laughs> awesome, Garrett. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Cheers. Very much.